Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, um, I'm looking at the evolution of industry in Uganda. This work was done by several of us. As you can see the names over there. Uh, I'll just uh, look at, um, I'll not go into number one, that's the outline of my presentation. Uh, into the studies, I think this has been ably done in the previous sessions. Uh, I'll look at uh, the colonial, post-colonial history of uh, industry in Uganda and then the current uh, government. Then I'll outline the industrial policy framework and move to the structure of the industry. Then I'll conclude. Uh, with regard to the history of, since I'm looking at the evolution of the industrial sector in Uganda, with regard to the history, it stems back from 1945 to 1960s. That's the first phase. This is the after uh, Britain, after World War II, had challenges with the foreign exchange. And therefore, they thought if, if they uh, designed a strategy to increase the exports of primary commodities and at the same time look for commodities or that increase the inflow of the dollar, that would really save their them the, the, the challenges they were having. So two categories of industries emerged at this time. Sorry. Uh, these are specifically the processing industries and the manufacturing industries. Now the processing industries were largely rural-based, dispersed all over the whole place. Cotton and coffee were major in this. And then the manufacturing industry were concentrated in the, rural, in the urban areas, trying to uh, manufacture commodities that would do import substitute largely. Then what followed in the 1950s was major projects were carried out like hydroelectricity, power station, promotion of mineral ex uh, exploration, and then extending the rail line to areas where the raw materials are. These were major uh, infrastructure investments into the industrial sector to push it to achieve their agenda. At the same time, to deal with the credit, uh, Uganda Development Corporation was founded as a, as a prestato largely to get money to the industrialists and also to guarantee initial risk capital for investors. And uh, this model of industrial promotion had the private-public partnership, sort of, and it propelled industrial development during the colonial era. Now, after the colonial era, much of what went on within the industrial sector was the State guided. The state really did much of the, 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 the investment and the planning, ETC. And uh, we had so many parastatals, I can't admit them here, uh, that did a lot of uh, industrial development in textiles and ETC. But a time came when we, we had a president called Ida Min. Many of you have heard about him, uh, where things almost came to a grinding halt. Uh, during this time, I think we had sanctions, mismanagement, all this mismanagement and, 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 and sanctions led to a, a, a total breakdown of the industrial sector totally. And of course, at this time, they were all state-owned, and the state was starved of especially foreign exchange. So uh, the 1970s to 1980s, there was virtual absence of heavy industries totally, uh, of, of the few that were, were existing. So this decline. Um, kind of killed the potential growth poles for uh, industrialization in the country. And uh, just to give you a glimpse, if you look at, these are manufactured outputs in Uganda, and these are the, 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 the manufacturers themselves, and uh, vegetable oil, blankets, fabrics, etc. When you look in the 1960s, you'll see that uh, in terms of tonnage, all right, there is an increment up to 1970, then there's a decline. You can see this line is a little bit thin, just to demonstrate that there was a decline during that uh, period. Um, now, the, the last phase is the industrial development from 1986 to date. Um, now, this is marked by priorities for industrial development that follow the path of economic liberalization where 
the government did uh, a lot of reforms, structural adjustment, and all those liberalization, privatization, all this liberal approach to industrialization. And the state saying, look here, we are not going to get involved. Do it yourself, the, the private sector. Now, uh, during this time, one very important uh, sort of uh, legislation was uh, uh, the establishment of uh, an investment code that led to, to the establishment of the Uganda Investment Authority, responsible for attracting investors into the country, and of course, as a one-stop center, as part of the liberalization and the, you know, to assist the private sector. And uh, Uganda is a, a member to these well-known multinational investment guarantee agents, and uh, at the same time, um, International Center for uh, Settlement of Investment Disputes. All these uh, to lure or to, or to attract investors to come into the country. But there was lack of a conscious, proactive, distinct national industrial policy for the government itself to get involved. This is what's missing. After liberalizing, we see a lot of pushing everything to the private sector. Just to give us a glimpse of the, the share of the manufacturing sector during uh, over time, from 1980 to, to 2008, um, as you can see, we start from very you know, far down there, move a little bit, below 10, around 1999, 2000, and then we stabilize below 8. So the contribution to GDP has not really hit the charts, it has more or less been increasing, but low. But this one shows us the trends in sectoral composition, which, uh, of which we have, this is industry. It has a little bit you know, increased. Agriculture, of course, has gone down, but the service sector has really bulged, has, it, it has taken, so in other words, the, the, the service sector has grown at a higher rate than the rest of the other sector, but of course manufacturing and industry has also grown during the same time following these policies. And I want also now to look at the industrial policy very quickly. Largely there are three things that we look at. The first one is the macroeconomic stability policies. Stabilize the price. Look at inflation to make sure that everything is stable within the economy. And I will not elaborate much uh, about that because you, you all know that. Then the trade policies were mainly trying to reduce tariffs to the MNF rate. I mean, they reduced from 19% to 11, although they went up a little bit to 15 following the introduction of the common external tariff because it had to be the same for all the East African countries. Nevertheless, there is the effort to reduce the MNF rate and tackling non-tariff barriers in compliance with the WTO guidelines. And then the Uganda gives exemptions on importation of capital. If you're importing capital, you, 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 you don't pay the taxes, zero. So these are the trade uh, policies. And then se sector specific, and I'll not elaborate much, but the sector specific um, uh, policies are meant to revamp productive capacity, uh, to create clusters, and uh, to provide an ideal environment for the businesses to operate okay, within the, uh, this time. Of course, we also have the industrial policy as one of the sector specific. Uh, policies, but all this is meant to, to help a, a manufacturing, a industrial manufacturing to, to pick up. Now, I will go to this one very quickly, looking at uh, the composition of the industrial sector in Uganda. The industrial sector in Uganda comprises this uh, uh, construction, water, formal manufacturing, this is the categorization, informal manufacturing, electricity, mining. But as you can see, uh, construction is the booming thing. This is the sun rise uh, a, uh, industry within, within the, the, the industrial sector. And the manufacturing takes about 20% in terms of composition. Now, in terms of the detailed description of the, the subsector, these are the undertakings, agro-processing, chemical, metallurgical industry, engineering, non-metallurgical industry, and then paper. So that is roughly the, the composition. Now, <clears throat> this uh, table gives us the distribution of farms in the manufacturing subsector. 
by employment ban. We want to know, uh, do we have large scale, small scale, or medium? But as you can see, um, small scale seems to be the in thing. Those that employ five to nine people, 58%. This is quite a big number. Then medium is uh, ab about, um, uh, I think, 9%. And then large scale, you can see, 3%. So this suggests Uganda has a very small proportion of large scale manufacturing firms. These are small scale. Basically, that's what this table would like to. Yes, uh, I think I'm on time, sir. Yeah, then the, the regional distribution. I, I want to say that uh, it's Kampala or the central region. The Kampala is the capital city. That takes the biggest chunk. Central region, including Kampala, the capital city, is 6% although in the 1970s and 60s it was Ginger Town in eastern Uganda. So much of these activities are taking place within the center of the capital city area. In terms of ownership of these farms, uh, we have sole proprietors, we have the private, the private industry companies, and then partners, then others. This is where you get the, what I would call public limited companies that would get money on the capital stock markets. <clears throat> So as you can see, most of the farms are not listed, so they cannot raise capital through capital uh, markets. Um, and very importantly, overall, more than half of the farms in the manufacturing sector are foreign-owned. You can see from here, this is joint venture, joint venture. This is foreign in, within these three years, 41. 40. Then when you come to joint, still you, you, you can see that. So it's the bigger portion of the, the ownership Area. Then what the constraints. The constraints <clears throat> are the normal ones. Infrastructure, the, 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 the skills. Uh, we, we don't have the indigenous capacity to adopt uh, and develop technologies. There's heavy reliance on uh, imported inputs, erratic, and I'll go a little bit on this, erratic supply of power. Uh, we have problems with transport and logistics. Getting credit is a problem, interest rates are very high, and then we operate in excess capacity. You can imagine, 50%. Now, uh, a little bit about electricity, and I will ignore much of that and simply bring you to, to this, that uh, Uganda, use biomass, usage of biomass in terms of energy is 92%, then 70% is fossil fuel, and 1% is electricity. So you can imagine if you're talking about industrialization, when utilization of energy, 1% is electricity. And of that, 70% is used by households. Of this 1%, 70% is households. Commercial activities is 13%. Industry is only 10%. Uh, so utilization of electricity is, is extremely low. And uh, these two graphs kind of give us that picture. We have two power stations. Now we have three. Uh, a new one has come on board. But I just want to draw your attention to, from 2005, we had challenges with production of electricity. This is the established uh, uh, megawatt capacity of this thing, and all right, okay, and uh, this is what was being produced. And you can see fossil uh, oil was almost catching up with hydropower, and oil is 10 times in terms of production costs to generate energy. Now, um, we have sunset, uh, rather, the textile industry, just, just to make a mention, is what, are, what we call a sunset industry in Uganda because it's really going down. From 1973, when we were pro, pro, uh, processing 400,000 bales of cotton, now it's only 15. But the construction industry is really coming up. And these are the problems associated with why the textile industry is going down. And I think finally, the conclusion, I will only make mention of these two that Uganda's industrial policy over the last two decades has been a, a, a free market type of approach which the private sector has taken, where the private sector has taken the lead in shaping the, the structure. And I think this came a little bit premature in an economy which is predominantly agriculture without proper infrastructure. I, and and I'll, I'll, I'll stop at that. Thank you, Chair.